With a look inside Maricopa Community Colleges, this is Maricopa Now. Here are some of the stories. Scottsdale Community College fills a growing need with a unique teacher training program. Earning top honors in innovation, these student entrepreneurs are turning their ideas into reality. Plus, his passion for education is an inspiration. Meet this Rio Salado grad who has become an advocate for teachers across Arizona. And there's so much more on this edition of Maricopa Now. Welcome to our show. Thanks for joining us in Studio A at Scottsdale Community College. I'm your host, Kim Getz. While the future of education in Arizona has been a hot topic in the news lately, Maricopa Community Colleges continues to train teachers. Since 2003, one unique teacher training program at Scottsdale Community College has been sending teachers into K through 8th grade classrooms to teach young minds and meet the challenges of the state's growing teacher shortage. Jonathan Igueta has the story. Since 2003, the Scottsdale Teacher Education Partnership has done its part to help offset the Arizona teacher shortage in public schools. The one-year program prepares participants to become teachers in elementary and middle schools. All must have four-year college degrees or higher before being accepted, and many are making a career change into teaching. It's so rewarding to see progression and development and to see your kids get that light bulb moment where they finally grasp a concept. Thank you for sharing that with us, Katie. Kelly will be one of 22 teachers in training to graduate from the program this month. She earned her degree from Washington State University in 2016 and considered going back to pursue graduate school. But she decided to go into the STEP program instead. Now her goal is to be in charge of her own classroom next fall. And the program has given her more confidence to meet that challenge. It fully immerses you in the field of teaching and you get to work alongside with great professors who have so much experience teaching. Coordinators say that the program has attracted a wide range of professionals such as accountants, journalists, corporate staffers, and even a jet fighter pilot. Others have been in the teaching field as paraprofessionals but are now ready to move into full-time teaching roles. I interview them and each one of them all say, I'm coming into this post back program because I want a career that I make a difference and I really want to make a difference for children. Caleb Guest says that's why he decided to take his career in another direction. He had worked in the aerospace industry for 12 years doing IT and in other types of roles. But he started the STEP program last May and now he's a teacher's assistant for eighth grade science classes at Ingleside Middle School. He says Steps' 300 hours of in-class internships gave him a better grasp of a teacher's workload and what is needed to be successful in the field. So much of the teaching is adapting to what's going on, modifying when needed, and you know, being willing to change things up. You've got to be able to adjust on the fly. He also says that on those tough days when things don't go as planned, it's good to remember why he got into the profession and what his motivation was that led him to do it. Because not every lesson goes well, and you have to accept those and, and learn from them. We opened up the nucleus, we'd have long, long strands of DNA. Because the STEP program looks for teacher candidates with a commitment to helping kids, retaining them in the classroom is one of STEP's strengths. Kyra McSwain had a career negotiating contracts, followed by 12 years as a stay-at-home mom. Now she's about to graduate from the STEP program and become a teacher. It's not easy for everyone to be somewhere for seven hours a day. Kids that are struggling, I hope to help them out and make their day a little brighter and make them want to learn. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Jonathan Igueta. The Cisco Innovation Challenge rewards students for their entrepreneurial ideas. Elizabeth Eckel takes us to Paradise Valley Community College to meet two students who stood out in the competition. Recently, two Paradise Valley Community College students won the Cisco Innovation Challenge competition. It's part of the ASU Poder program, a five-week entrepreneurship program offered to Maricopa Community College students at no cost, thanks to funding by Cisco. After five weeks, um, students actually submit uh, their plan, their project uh, through a video uh, to uh, ASU's Entrepreneurship and Innovation Division, where they select um, which projects are 
uh, you know, going to the next levels. Video entries are narrowed down to eight finalists who then present a five-minute PowerPoint introducing their innovation, followed by a Q&A session with the judges. This Podir program allows our students to think in terms of social entrepreneurship and to what extent entrepreneurship can actually create positive social change in the community. You will see their products, you will see their passion, and, and you know, it's just so impressive. SureStrap LLC is the first lock and ratchet strap for the patent. SureStrap basically added a key and a lock, so you lock it and nobody can lift or release the tension so your things don't get stolen. Mine is a home blood testing unit. I just figured it'd be a little safer way to have blood drawn if you could do it at home. And it'd be quicker too. Pitching an innovative idea to a community audience and panel of judges can be intimidating, but Dr. Dash's students were well prepared. He is somebody who, who genuinely cares about the students, and he's been there for me when anything I've ever needed, questions I've had to ask. The great thing about PVCC, everyone is here to help you, and they want to see you succeed, and they will take the time uh, with you to see that through. When two of our students won this Cisco Innovation Challenge, uh, it was just a matter of pride. Paradise Valley Community College offers an entrepreneurship certification program to get anyone with an innovative idea started on the right track. If you have an inkling for having a product and want to develop it, this is a great start. For Maricopa Now, I'm Elizabeth Eckel. Coming up on Maricopa Now, a fundraiser for student scholarships has this audience getting up close and personal with the characters from spam -a -Lot. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind pizza. wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope I don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. One recent graduate of Rio Salado College is sharing his passion for education in the classroom and advocating for teachers across Arizona. Lisa Aquafreda has his story. Everyone take your hands and clap and go, ear means to go. Step inside Lennon Audrain's Spanish class, and it seems he's been teaching for years. Y'all go, hey, yos van, they go, hey, yos van, they go, usted, let's van, you go. Okay. It's something that I've always loved to do. I even got a chalkboard one time and a pencil sharpener and it was like the best birthday gift I think I've ever had. So I think it was from then and teaching's where it's at for me. Students are captivated by his dynamic personality and his positive teaching style. And when students get a question incorrect, Everyone say, Ella not Ella. He makes everything fun. He tries to do it in a fun way and not in a boring way. Where are they going? I don't they ban. He makes me feel like I didn't get it wrong. It doesn't matter. That's what you guys are going to do to figure out what these places are, okay? Audrain has accomplished so much at the tender age of 18. It's voy, vas, va, vamos, vais, van. And this means to go. He graduated with two associates from Rio Salado before even graduating high school. And get this, he'll graduate with his master's in education May of 2019. It's through the dual enrollment program at Rio Salado, he was able to take college classes while in high school and join the national organization called Educators Rising. The goal and mission of Educators Rising is to really solidify those good teaching practices in high school so we have great teachers in the future. You know what VA means. Right? it means to go. Teachers teaching teachers about teaching. <laughs> so that's the best way I can put it, yeah. Audrain's energy and enthusiasm for teaching is contagious. These students from Phoenix College look up to him. He's just a great example of like a super fun teacher, someone that loves the students, someone that loves to teach, and someone that really cares about other teachers. Hey, she goes. Looking at him and watching what he does, it's really exciting and I love it. You may work with a partner on this. And Maricopa Community Colleges help set him up for success. He really helps kids understand kind of how to bring what's going on outside the classroom into the classroom. Whatever the future holds, Audrain says he hopes to always make a positive impact through education. For Maricopa Now, I'm Lisa Aquafreda. 
Lennon will be attending the Educators Rising National Conference this summer as the national president. We are the players. Ah, we, are. Play. we do, yes. and you're watching MCTV. Yes. Is that an army? No, 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 no darling, no. It, it's, it's on a big box. Phoenix College artist and professor Janita Landrum takes us into her studio and shares her inspiration behind her art. Welcome to Spirit of the Arts. I'm Andrea Zakszewski. Creating art for me always gave me just this peace. Even as a little person, I remember that, that feeling. I probably couldn't tell you what it was, but I remember when I was coloring, you know, I would just feel a certain way about it. Janita started painting as a child and discovered she had found her calling when she visited the Art Museum of Detroit. I was just, just turned on. I was so jazzed at being in the museum. And then but behind the museum was um, a college of art. And as soon as I stepped foot on the campus, I knew that was where I was supposed to be, and this was what I was supposed to be doing. Janita continued her dream to be an artist and received her Bachelor of Arts from Arizona State University and Master's from Ohio State. Her work has been exhibited in solo and group exhibitions. How I celebrate my heritage of being an African-American female and then also with that being a woman, those two things are kind of a revolving type of um, concept as I work in bodies of work and in each body it takes on a different type of characteristic. It started making this texture. I love the texture. I do too. So those are pieces that um, I created um, while I was in Germany. It's a little bit about Germany and it's a little bit about me. I think it's contemporary and conceptual. People know my work more so because of the color. I'm a master colorist. I love layering, whether I'm painting, I'm watercolor, I'm drawing. I like to slowly build up to a certain type of intensity. What I like about her art and what speaks to me is that I have always been a person who enjoys looking at African art. What you also see is a, a story that she tells that you don't necessarily see with other art. And so it resonates because I recognize the story that's been told. Janita enjoys mentoring artists. What I'm good at is helping people find the level that they're at. What kind of artist are you? You know, because um, everybody doesn't create the same way. She has given emerging and new female artists a place to show by exhibiting them in art galleries. Janita enjoys spreading her wisdom in the classroom as an instructor at Phoenix College. She teaches a bookless art history class. So I created a class that was more interactive, that was stimulating, it was about the student. At the same time, I could bring in the historical references of art history. She has a few suggestions for artists. What I always tell artists is that learn how to play. A lot of students that I talk to, they come in, they're just so serious. It blocks that creativity. Through that play, what happens is that you're gonna have breakthroughs. I've had really good mentors along the way. They were all very successful. I figured that uh, one day what I would do is that I would be able to mentor other women. And so that is actually what I'm doing. Janita keeps in touch with artists she mentors and gets to hear their success stories. One of my students, she called me the other day and she's going to Goldsmith in London. This girl is incredible. I've shown her in my gallery. She's in my traveling exhibition because she's very good. I am giving her that same experience that my mentors had did for me. Janita continues to mentor students, paint, and continue her mission of helping artists. The Maricopa Community Colleges offer classes for all kinds of skill sets that help foster the careers of artists. If you feel moved by the works of Janita, perhaps her story will inspire you to discover your own artistic talents. For more information, go to phoenixcollege.edu. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Spirit of the Arts. I'm Andrea Zakszewski. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. 
I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. The music department at Scottsdale Community College presented the musical comedy Spam A Lot, which retells the legend of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Deanne Kincaid takes us behind the scenes and introduces us to this motley crew of characters. I feel happy. <laughs> I feel happy. I'm not dead yet. I can dance like a thing. I'm not dead yet. Set in the Middle Ages, Monty Python's Spamalot is an irreverent parody of the legend of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. The king and his cohorts ride imaginary steeds to the comical sound of coconut shells, beating out the clip-clop of horses' hooves. Signifying by divine providence that I, Arthur, was to carry Excalibur! Excalibur! Joshua Brody credits his deep voice and real beard with helping him land the role of King Arthur. It was a blast, you know, Monty Python, such, such a fun script, quirky jokes, it's a great time. Aubrey Cole said she auditioned at the very last minute and landed the role of Lady of the Lake. experience. Oh, I love doing the show. Especially because I've usually played like more of a mom type of character, so like this kind of sexy kind of character is a little different for me. With limited space and funding, Spamalot was chosen as a doable yet ambitious project. Cast and crew numbered close to 60 people, the largest production of the last decade. For several months, the cast rehearses only with the music director, Beth Livingston Hakes. All the way through the production, I'm just playing the piano. So they don't ever hear all the beautiful colors and variations of the instruments. It's not until band day, two weeks before the show opens, that the entire nine-piece band rehearses with the actors. Normally, the band would be hidden to one side of the stage but this was the largest band they'd ever had and it was on the stage behind the actors. We wanted it back there for the Las Vegas scene so we could pull that curtain up and then see a little bit of us through, through the scrim. Oh, there you go, bring it Spamalot is a spectacle of period correct costumes. It really helps get into the character. We have CC Sickler, she's our, she's our lead costumer here and she does a great job with all the costumes. These audience members were enthusiastic supporters. We loved it, it was great. It was, it was a really good funny. show. It was so well put together. Everything was great. This is a great department. It's a lot of work from a lot of people, you know, 50 to 60 at least people putting in time into this. But it all comes together and then hearing that audience laugh, bringing joy to them, that, that all makes it worth it. I'm Deanne Kincaid for Maricopa Now. I'll be there waiting for you. Stay with us to see how students came together to offer a unique experience for the audience of Spamalot before the show. Glendale Community College Police Academy, Fire Science, EMT, and paramedic students are put to the test in this mass casualty drill. It's an opportunity for students to prepare for incidents such as mass shootings, says EMS instructor Dan Malinowski. First responder students train each semester at the Glendale Regional Public Safety Training Center. For more information about these programs, visit Glendale Community College's website. Since 1990, a partnership between Phoenix Regional Police Academy and Rio Salado College offers students the opportunity to pursue their career goals. Recruits complete more than 700 hours of training to become police officers and earn college credit through Rio Salado College. This partnership offers the opportunity for career advancement. Officers can earn a Certificate of Completion or an Associate of Applied Science in Law Enforcement Technology. For more information, visit Rio Salado College's website. 
Mesa Community College is the site of Arizona's first accredited arboretum. The arboretum includes plants from around the world with nearly 100 species of trees and over 80 types of cacti and succulents. The Southern and Dobson campus earned this distinction recently after years of work by students and faculty. The arboretum also functions as a living laboratory for student research. For more information, visit Mesa Community College's website. Mesa Community College celebrates its 350th student internship with the Disney College program. Students from a variety of majors gain experience working at the Disney Parks and Resorts in California or Florida and can earn up to six college credits. Students interested in this paid internship can apply now for the fall semester. For more information, visit Mesa Community College's website. Students walked the runway to success recently. Gateway Community College students modeled clothing from local designers at Warehouse 115 at Bentley Projects in Phoenix. This annual fundraiser supports student success and retention programs. For more information, visit this address. We're going to make a chilled cantaloupe soup with a lime granite. Now this is one of those menu items that can be used as an appetizer, an intermezzo, or even a light dessert. We usually serve it in a restaurant in the early fall or spring when the weather's still fairly warm. It's pretty refreshing stuff. I'm going to start by making the lime granite. I'm going to add about half the water to start. And then gently whisk this together just to start dissolving that sugar and then I'll add the remaining water. Now you can make this less sweet, you don't have to use all that amount of sugar, and that'll create a little more tart flavor to the lime granite. I'm gonna pour that into a shallow pan, and that's gonna accelerate the freezing process. And during the first three hours of the freezing process, maybe 30 minutes or so, you wanna come in and start and move that around. You wanna mix this up. My mise en place is ready for the cantaloupe soup. I'm going to start by taking the sugar and putting that into a sauce pot. So we have a nice puree. It still has a little bit of texture to it. I don't want it to be too smooth. And I'm going to add this puree to the sugar in the sauce pot. I have cornstarch and sparkling water. I'm gonna take a little bit of that sparkling water and I'm gonna make what's called a cornstarch slurry. And that's just gonna help thicken up the soup. The remainder of the sparkling water I'm gonna to add to the cantaloupe mixture. I'm gonna add the cornstarch. Now you may not need all the cornstarch depending upon the water content and the cantaloupe. So just as with the lime granite, we want to cool this down quickly. Let it sit out at room temperature for a half hour to 45 minutes and then you can put it into a refrigerator covered. And you wanna let that soup get nice and cold. So we're ready to go ahead and serve this. I recommend a chilled bowl. Nice little compact scoop of granite. That's gonna go right into the center of the soup. Melon balls for some texture. And then just a little bit of mint on top of each piece of cantaloupe. So before I taste, I'd like to invite our two student assistants out to help. We have Marie and Jeanette. Each one of us grabs some cantaloupe. Refreshing. Very refreshing. And there's our chilled cantaloupe soup with lime green. Chef's Menu is brought to you by the Culinary Studies Program at Australia Mountain Community College. For today's recipe, please visit this address. Hey, you. Yeah, you. 
getting that college education. What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me? It's not every day that the audience gets to enjoy good food and mingle with the actors of the theater production. Lisa Aquafreda shows us how Spamalot performers and culinary students came together for a good cause. Strange object I see before me. This eye that stares deep into my soul and beckons me to join it. She's really mean to me. Anyways, we have all sorts of festivities here. Festivities? <laughs> that there is. We have silliness. Joy. Passion. Entertainment. Music! Do you, get, do you know that one? They have a little auction that is, I heard it is called a silent auction, but it is quite loud and I have no idea how it works. Everyone enjoyed a little fun to tickle the funny bone and tasty treats to satisfy the palate. The first ever Spamalot fundraiser was underway. Spam, theater, made perfect sense. All this fun. We took an amazing opportunity to bring the theater department, the musical theater department, and the culinary department, and we mashed them all together and made an evening of pure, unadulterated dining entertainment. I wish that you would join me, my friend. Well, you need some energy here. With one very important goal in mind. All the funds raised from tonight's events support scholarships. Without it, they won't exist, and lives won't be changed. One. Two, three. A green show is actually uh, a little mini show that happens before a show that kind of mocks it. And the overall goal was to get everybody ready for the show. That's right, we need to get you into makeup. Yes. And yeah. <laughs> that means interacting with commoners. Are you of the queen as well? Uh, oh dear. Oh. Enforcing zany rules. Rule number three. So that means if you drink something, you must drink more. And enjoying a feast fit for a king. I helped work on it doing old style English dishes. We tried to incorporate a lot of spam in like the, the starter courses. Speaking of king, selecting one of course. God save the king! I believe that this dear sir shall be the king of our feast for he has not enough hair to get in the way of the crown. And whenever there's a king. Your highness, can I please check your nails? There's always a queen. I've never seen this much wealth in my life. It's better on your skull. Thank you. Oh, you are too kind, a true queen. Even the president of SEC didn't want to miss out on the entertainment. To see them perform on stage and to appreciate the work that the faculty do to bring out this wonderful talent. But it was the queen that was truly touched. At our table was our former president. It was an honor to be with him. When you combine theater and great food, <laughs> it just brings people together. From Maricopa Now, I'm Lisa Aquafreda. Mm. And that's our show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for our great lineup of shows, including Inside Maricopa Sports and Enfoque and Two Futuro. Also, check out our website at mctv.maricopa.edu and click on DestTube. DestTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. Until next time, take care. Don't touch that remote. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports, Infoki and Tufaturo, and our daily community calendar update, Campus Calendar.